I'm Rebecca Bowers, DO, and in this video I'm going to be um, talking about somato-emotional tissue texture abnormalities and showing um, a simple way that you can address these. Um, ideally you need, need to have some palpatory skills, um, but this is not advanced stuff. This is a pretty simple way of interacting and addressing a somato-emotional component of tissue texture changes. So, basically the nervous system, trying to be helpful, tends to sometimes make associations between an emotionally charged event and physical trauma that may have happened at the same time. So, dental procedures are a pretty common one that result in the somato-emotional tissue texture changes. Usually, say in a dental procedure, you're gonna find a lot of different things in the face, jaw, neck, shoulder area. But anything physically that happened around the time that people had fear or grief or these dissonant um, emotions can end up getting linked into the nervous system as being associated um, to the emotional event. So I like to use an example of say someone who on the way to a funeral of someone that they care deeply about stubs their toe on the way in to uh, the funeral. The brain, like I said, does try to make sense of things and it associates that pain of the toe being stubbed and the throbbing and everything that happened due to that physical trauma, it jumbles it all up with the grief and the other emotions um, around the what the person feels for the person who died in the funeral and everything like that. So lots of times when the physical stuff is healed up in the toe, there's this residual fascial tightness that's kind of protecting. And if there's still unresolved emotional issues related to that person, you might not ever get the toe to completely relax and regain its normal range of motion. As far as the dental procedure, um, who knows if they're wearing too tight of socks or a watch or someone was leaning on their arm or something, you might end up finding these somato-emotional restrictions somewhere farther than where the person was actually using and scraping and doing the dental procedure. So if you um, wouldn't mind lying on your back, please. Okay. Yep, head that way. All right, so what do these somato-emotional tissue textures feel like palpatory-wise? Um, basically, they feel like the fascia is guarding. So fibroblasts have the ability under stress, whether that's actual physical, chemical stress, or a perceived threat of harm. So emotional stress can fall into that. And they can turn from fibroblasts into myofibroblasts, and they can actually lay down contractile elements to it. So basically, it feels kind of like fascially there's this guarding. The fascial tissues in an area will be drawn towards each other and just like they're protecting an area, okay? This is a different feel than say, the reference zone of a trigger point. Um, that's probably gonna be the thing that when you're first starting out feeling the somato-emotional uh, tissue changes that you might confuse it with. The reference zone from a trigger point, not the trigger point itself, remember trigger points refer pain elsewhere, but in those same areas, if you look at those trigger point maps where they refer pain, there's always going to be a tissue texture abnormality as well. So what that referred tissue texture abnormality feels like for trigger points is like shrink wrap. The tissues, let's say he had here a trigger point reference zone for say the external obliques of the abdomen or something. It's going to feel like here, suck down the fascia, okay? Versus if he has a somato-emotional thing here because he had some kind of abdominal surgery or he got like punched in the gut or something, that is gonna feel more drawn together like a protective mechanism, okay? All right, so then you can palpate your patient. Um, in the case of say dental stuff, most of us had some kind of dental procedures. You can open and close his jaw. So I can just check for the range of motion. He can close it. I can also push into the tissues and he's got this line of tightness here 
which could be some kind of a muscular contraction, not just the little muscle layers laid down in fascia as a protective mechanism. And so that linearness to it that feels deeper could possibly just be one of the floor of the mouth muscles contracting. But when I head out this direction over here, he just has this area, this kind of circular area that has that drawn together type of feeling. And in this case, it actually feels pretty superficial. So it doesn't make sense with any one particular muscle that it would contract and have a pattern of just this little almost circle right here that's tight. Okay, so now that I've found a somatoemotional feeling tissue texture abnormality, how can I address it? Definitely some people are gonna have already been working on some of these, knowing it or not knowing it, and using myofascial releases and other techniques. But one that I find is very helpful and quickly resolves it is called neuroocular release. So neuroocular release, I was first introduced to this concept by some of my SAO students who had gone to complication um, in 2017 and I had been unable to attend and so I said okay when you guys come back I want you to tell me what are the coolest things you saw at complication and one of those things is they talked about neuroocular release as presented by Richard Feely so he presented it as you can use it to treat um, points tender points that you find in the body and you use indirect techniques so um, they kind of gave me a little bit of an introduction to the idea and I was left with, all right, well, let me see what I can do with countering points and other things. And while I was exploring various tender points, I happened across this other way that you can use neuroocular release. Basically, how I think it works when you're addressing somatoemotional restrictions is that what I found is while monitoring this feeling of guarding and contraction in the fascial area. With my other hand, I can come closer and farther away. So I'm using the principle of accommodation, right? And so sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems control our pupils dilating and contracting, right? So when they contract and narrow, that's our parasympathetic nervous system activating that. And then when they dilate, that's our sympathetic nervous system. So my theory is that basically I am dialing the balance between his sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system to kind of just the right level needed for this particular spot. What do I feel at the area that's monitoring the somatoemotional restriction? Basically, I feel that as I come closer, it released. And if I keep going, then it might just tighten up a little bit. So I go, all right, I've gone too far back it's releasing and if I go farther it tightens up again so in some ways it's kind of like when you're trying to find that sweet spot for balanced ligamentous release and you're like oh it goes in this direction but if I go too far it starts to tighten up so I got to come back so there's this kind of sweet spot where you've balanced the autonomic nervous system to what this area needs so I find that sweet spot right here and so he's looking at my hand and I have him close his eyes I remove my hand and I have him open his eyes and then I feel this relaxing. So emotions can definitely be tricky things. Sometimes that gets rid of it completely with just one. It's mostly calm, just a little bit, mm, there's one more spot that feels a little bit more concrete. So actually I'm curious, is this still a somatoemotional kind of restriction or does it have a different palpatory feel? This one actually feels drawn in, almost like the tissue's been tethered in one particular spot. So that is actually a counter strain point feel when the tissues are kind of drawn in and tethered. And so he's got some kind of a counter strain spot here. Um, that's a, a different video. We can do neuroculates for that later. So I'm just a little superficial. So now I'm gonna push in a little bit more and get a sense of those deeper tissues. And under that counter strain point, I'm now not pushing on it because I don't want to torture you. I'm kind of pushing around it into the deeper tissues and there is over here just another one of those drawn together spots and I would just do it the same way. It basically the steps are again just so you can see it. Here's a little deeper spot, has that drawn together feel. Find the right spot, he closes his eyes, I move my hand, he opens his eyes and I feel this relaxation. Um, I would say the only people who I really found can't seem to tolerate this 
are people who have um, uh, just have a concussion or have a severe post-concussive syndrome. Sometimes um, that hand is there and then poop it's not there anymore is a little unsettling to their nervous system, their cerebellum and spatial um, issues. Um, and I would imagine that people with cerebrovascular accidents or other abnormalities where spatially there's some issues might have a problem. But the reaction was basically just some dizziness and went in, you know, did some suboxone release, some various uh, cranial stuff, um, and helped calm down that sense of dizziness for them so that they uh, didn't have that problem. All right. Hope that that's helpful.